converting your 14 volts to 12 volts uh, you need little regulator circuits now oh, there's lots on the market as we said i've got various different types uh, this is quite popular i don't know if you can see this but this has got a little uh, pot you can turn to adjust the voltage so before you connect it up what you need to do is power it up adjust that pot to make sure you get the desired voltage on the output if you plug in a 3s battery then you're going to get 11 volts or 10 volts out all right this was another unit right these were sold as i think i've got these from banggood uh they're a linear regulator 4s to 12 volts now I've covered it. These are given 12 volt output to 300 milliamp. Now, one thing to be conscious of when you're actually putting these in line, yeah, they're great this small, but there is a limitation to the, how much power you can put through them. Let me show you the size of this, give you an idea. I can get the done bag open. Right. That will give you an idea. I haven't got anything else I can compare with. But anyway, they are quite small, as you can see. Now, this is basically, it takes, it's looking to take a 4S in and regulates to 12 volt out. Obviously, if you put 3S in, then you won't get 12 volt out because a 3S is 11 volts. So, what I often use these for is in the mini quads, is put these in line with the battery so that you're running a 4s it regulates through you to 12 volts to run the fpv now with all the escs and the flight controller drawing power there especially with the escs there's what's there's a back feed you get spikes and what's not going back back emf that may has well historically has been causing people problems where it's been actually burning out their vtx's so they're flying around quite merrily got a 4s battery then all of a sudden the vtx dies how did that happen hmm maybe did you have a regulator on it oh no straight off the battery feed right put one of these in circuit no problem because whatever is going in there is 12 volts coming out so it's always better to run your fpv off a regulator and these are very good they're a maytech unit um two pound a couple of quid they're next to nothing so it's well worth doing it now i come across this one like i said this is 300 milliwatt so you need to be careful for your 200 milliwatt um fpv no problem at all but once you start going on uh, on the larger one 600 milliwatt i think actual ca uh, consumption power is about 300 milliwatt so if you was putting a 600 milliwatt video transmitter you'd be overloading this i've also found these which is another small unit which i shall open Now these I've had from Hobby King. They are just a small, but they are quite nifty. And I shall show you why. Right, again it's by Maytech. You may have seen them in Hobby King. There's four connections there, which is your seven to 21 volts in, ground in the center, and your five to 12 volts out. So I don't know whether you can, the camera will focus on it. So it's five to 12 volts out. How can you have five to 12 volts? There's no potentiometer, there's nothing. What there is, I don't know whether you can see, but there, there is, there is a link. Now with that link closed, put a bridge of solder over it, it's 12 volt. Out of the bag, it's five volt. So if you want a, a, a five volt back, I think these are rated about one and a half amps, which is quite a good power output for such a small device. But you bridge that out, 
then you've got a 12 volt regulator how do they compare probably about the same weight and not a massive difference in size that's wider that's thinner that's longer that's shorter so yeah pound for pound they're pretty much on par but this one is only ever going to give you 12 volts this one you've got a choice so those little flytron units the flytron um, strobes that i mentioned earlier on they've actually they actually run on five volts so you would then need one of these to give you a five volt output right so for reference here they are like i said that's that's a pure 12 volt regulator um put your 4s in 12 volts out this one is optional you can make it 12 or 5 by putting a bridge in the link this one is the one with the um pot you can adjust this one you can get any voltage out obviously if you put a 4s in then you're going to get up to 14 volts out you can't get more than what you put in if you're running 600 milliwatts uh, video transmitters go for this one 25 200 any of these two would be fine this one will will do um a 600 no problem at all also so it's up to you if you've got the, the carrying capacity then this is a good all-rounder if not if, if weight is a concern use that um i prefer to use the larger components uh, especially in this build because it's going to give me um less risk so yeah that's your three amp back that's one and a half and that's half an amp uh, i think it was actually 300 milliwatt 12 volts so be careful don't go mad they may be small but they're not powerful I've gone for the adjustable back. I'm going to dial up 12 volts. I'm going to put a 4S battery into that. And I'm going to get three 12 volt supplies. This is a 3 amp back. It's variable, as I said. These uh, generally cost about a pound. If you want to buy them from China, you can get them for more like 30 pence. I'm going to put some shrink tubing on there. You can see a capacitor there. The capacitor I've put on the input only that's a hundred microfarad capacitor i think it's about a 30 volt or whatever so it's, it's plenty enough to cover the voltage just going in but that will filter any transients any spikes or anything that's coming through uh, from the batteries and speed controllers or any interference should capture that through the regulator 12 volts out three outputs a camera video transmitter maybe an osd but that would be a nice smooth power supply they are small as i said they're not a particularly big unit so this will sit in the front just behind the camera and will hopefully give me a nice clean video right what i've done got the back ready i got my multimeter plugged in so i can uh, see the voltage now right or wrongly this is a 4s battery but it's in storage so I haven't gone with a fully charged battery and I'll tell you why. When you when I if I check the the battery voltage for that it's going to be at its lowest operating voltage. Now when this being in storage is not a fully charged battery therefore I'm going to set the voltage at its lowest point to give me 12 volts. So if it creeps up a little bit on a fully charged battery, then 12 and a half volts, not a problem. What I don't want is it dropping down below 12 volts when the battery starts to run down. So if I start off with a run down battery or in storage, then that's a good base to start from. So I'm going to plug in this battery and hopefully I'm not going to have the magic smoke. I've got 11.18 volts on the multimeter. I'm going to adjust the potentiometer and you'll see the voltage climbing and it's taking away over 14 volts. So going down, set it to 12. Yeah, that's 12.16 volts. So I got a bit of margin to drop a little bit more voltage on that battery, uh, but under load, it should give me 12 volts. On a fully charged battery may creep up a little bit 
but uh, but no, that won't be a problem. And just to, to show something, if I take off the 12 volt battery, the 14 volt battery, and I go with the 3S, I get 9.97 volts. So I can still run, that'll still run the, the cameras and everything, but obviously it's, it is dropping it a little bit. So that's what you've got to be mindful of. These type of regulators, they're adjustable, but they will be adjustable at varying voltages. So once you go below the, the 4S and you put a 3S battery on, you, you need to be mindful that it could, it could be detrimental. Uh, however, the other regulators that I showed you earlier on, they they would be a bit more forgiving and they would try to give you the tw near the 12 volts. So if the battery going in is 11 volts, then 11 volts you'll get out the other end. So if you need that 12 volts, like I said, I'm going to run this 4S and I'm happy, happy to run that as it is. I put these uh, plugs on, so if need be, I can bypass this quite easily. So I just by simply unplugging the the supply, and and using these uh, as I had there, as you can see, there's a bunch of them. So yeah, that's it. The voltage regulators. <laughs>